This is shocking, but not surprising. 53 headquarters have left San Francisco since 2020, and we're not talking about your mom and pop stores. We're not talking about your small startup next door that's worth a billion dollars, even though it's pretty big, but we're talking about some of the biggest corporations in the world. And one of them is Tesla, left you know, back in 22, now Twitter is leaving, SpaceX is leaving the entire California region in general. San Francisco literally shot itself in the foot. I just want to say it. That's just how it is. You know, now you have so many competing cities in the U.S. and also Canada. Now you have a lot of cities in the U.S. like Las Vegas. I know. It's a gambling hub. But Vegas is becoming one of the biggest tech centers in the world. Austin, Nashville, Tampa, Miami. A lot of tech cities. And non-traditional tech cities. And these cities are taking talent from San Francisco. Because not a lot of people want to go to a place where it's so crime-ridden. I mean, if I'm paying the record sunshine tax, I better be getting some really good amenities. So look at this, guys. Commercial real estate wasteland. Almost 40% vacancies in the office department in Union Square, which is kind of like the equivalent to Fifth Avenue in, like, Manhattan. You know, Union Square is also equivalent to maybe, like, Shibuya in Tokyo or, like, the Pudong District in Shanghai. It's elite. And guess what? The vacancy rate is 20%. It's headed towards 30% about the year's end because so many stores like Macy's are closing down. So commercial and retail real estate wasteland. Tech companies are leaving. You name it. You want to know why? Walk around the Twitter HQ. There's literally just tents everywhere, people on the floor, drugs everywhere, needles. You got also a lot of human waste on the floor. And it's really surprising to see a high-end tech city like this literally not caring. It's almost like San Francisco wants that to be normal. But when you go to any other tech city in the world, you know, from Dubai to Shanghai to Singapore, you, you'll never see something like this. It's, it's not on their agenda. And the collapse in San Francisco real estate continues. Like Google is like, yeah, we're kind of done too despite their office being situated in one of the best areas in San Francisco, right next to the fair building, right next to the water. Who has said that they would not renew their lease next year on a 300,000 square foot space in San Francisco. They're done. It's over, guys. Big corporations, little startups, and when everyone is leaving, what does San Francisco have to offer? The whole point where San Francisco becomes a tech hub is because they have the big anchor companies here which attract the smaller companies, which eventually those smaller companies become big companies and the pattern repeats. Well, when you have such bad retail and commercial real estate and really bad policies, everyone starts to flee. Look at this, guys. North Face and San Francisco's Union Square will be closing at the end of the month. It's the end of an era. San Francisco is done. When the biggest malls have closed down, Macy's, Nordstrom are gone. San Francisco is kind of screwed. Even Salesforce is like, yeah, we're kind of done too. You know, the Salesforce CEO has been sending letters to city council begging them to clean up the streets. Of course, they don't listen. And Salesforce is like, yeah, we, we can't really stay here. Cuts office footprint by almost 50%. And this is just absolutely scary to see how many companies are leaving in such a short amount of time. You know, you would think that the city would be very alerted by this and maybe actually do something extremely drastic to get these companies to stay, but they don't really seem to care that much. And now many companies are leaving for other non-tradition tech cities. You know, Austin is becoming huge with Musk being the poster boy over there. And also look at this. Progressive policies are also destroying the little businesses. Let's take a step back from the big corp and look at the small businesses. Small business owners spend years opening these stores and hundreds of thousands of dollars, even millions of dollars, opening these stores. And of course, robberies and burglaries and vandalism are extremely common. It's so common that it gets to a point where a lot of these small businesses just close down. And many of them say there's no point in calling the police. Because San Francisco kind of views them as not considered real crime and just use insurance. And guess what? Small business insurance rates in San Francisco is one of the highest in the entire country. It's skyrocketing. And some insurance companies are dropping stores and owners left and right. Oh, if your store is in kind of an iffy neighborhood and you got high shoplifting, well, we're just going to drop you. 
And if you want to get new insurance, it's going to be so high to the point that are you even really making money in San Francisco? That's what everyone's asking. Let's see what San Francisco can do. Small businesses, big businesses, and the big titans are kind of all leaving. 